Hello everyone, welcome back to the vlog and happy birthday if today's your birthday and welcome to a reading vlog. And I just want to say right now, I know it's in the title, but this is a reading vlog with spoilers. So please do not watch this video unless one, you don't care about spoilers or two, you've already read the book. And I actually did a spoiler reading vlog for Fourth Wing when I read that earlier this year. So I'm going to have that link down below if you're interested in watching that. Um, but I think I have like literally three and a half hours of footage of me reading this book. So um, I'm thinking that it's gonna be kind of long. I hope you guys don't mind just listening to my rambles of what I'm thinking the entire time that I'm reading this book. <laughs> so I don't wanna waste anyone's time with a long intro. We're just gonna get into it. I wanna say again, this reading vlog has spoilers. It has spoilers, so prepare yourself. <laughs> And let's get into it. We are here, you guys. It is currently 8.54 p.m. And I am really hoping and thinking that Iron Flame is going to land on my Kindle in now five minutes. Here's the thing is, I don't know for sure. Technically, the book comes out tomorrow. And like my Kindle says, it will deliver on November 7th, which is tomorrow. But the last time that I pre-ordered a book, it showed up on my Kindle at 9 p.m. Because it's like midnight on the East Coast. And I am just hoping and praying that we are lucky enough that that is what's going to happen. Literally in preparation, I've made dinner, cleaned up from dinner, brushed my teeth, put my pajamas on, and gotten into bed because I just want to be cozy and ready to go for when 9 p.m. rolls around. Should we just like open this up and make sure it's not like on here? Yeah, it's definitely not. I am absolutely dying though because I saw this TikTok of Rebecca Yaros and um, I you couldn't fully hear the question, but it was something like say something that's gonna like make us either love or hate something that happens in the book. And I'm pretty sure she said, I reach for Dane's belt buckle. No. I cannot support this. I cannot support this. I I am going to be so shook if I freaking read that line in this book. I will die. Also, I am so ready for the smut in this book. I just have a really good feeling about it. A really good feeling. <laughs> 8.59 still. 9 p.m. Okay. It says 9 p.m. Okay. It still says this title will be auto-delivered to your Kindle on November 7th. This is actually going to be really funny. <laughs> and really depressing if the book is not here. Okay, we're gonna wait five minutes and then check again. Oh my god, this is actually hilarious. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. Oh my god. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it hasn't been five minutes. It's been four minutes, um, but I, I cannot wait any longer. Let's check again. <laughs> I'm starting to panic. Should have download, no read now. Is it really not going to come to my Kindle at 9 p.m.? Texting Kate to see if it's on her Kindle. Maybe I need to like restart it or something. <gasps> Kate said yes. She said that she has it. How does she have it and I don't have it? <laughs> <laughs> like, excuse me, I deserve this. Nothing, nothing, I've got nothing. <gasps> it's here, it just happened. Like, excuse me, two books in this series suddenly? Excuse me, open, thank you. <gasps> Oh my God, okay. Okay, you guys, it's happening. I am opening the book and we are officially starting Iron Flame. The wait is over, I'm so happy. <laughs> First chapter complete and oh my gosh, it was such a good setup I feel like for the book. You meet some new characters, you get reintroduced to some people and most importantly, Violet and Zayden still seem very into each other, so hopefully that also works out. <laughs> I am so intrigued to learn more about Brennan though. See like how he acts now compared to the way that Violet always spoke about him. It's gonna be really crazy. I literally think I'm gonna be reading for the next couple of hours. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It is the next day. Literally woke up at 12.30 in the morning last night with my Kindle still in my hand. So fell asleep reading, didn't make as much progress as I thought I would. Honestly, classic reading at night puts me immediately to sleep, which is why I tend to read right after work. But I did wake up at like 6.20 this morning, just naturally, I think because of daily savings, because usually I wake up at 7.20 and yeah. Anyway, um, so I did read a little bit more this morning and we are going to dive back in now. I'm about 100 pages in and I am loving it so far. So where are we? I'm about to start chapter seven and here's a little recap of what has happened so far. 
Violet woke up at the rebellion and they were kind of debating whether they were going to be allowed to go back or not. The reason being that Violet is uh, a soaring gal and her mom is super high up there and they don't want her, in her leaking her mom information about the rebellion. And on top of that, they know that Dane can read minds. So um, Violet needs to work really hard at keeping her shields up so that Dane cannot receive this secret information. Obviously, Dane is number one on my villain list. I am so mad at him constantly. Um, but they ultimately decide that they go back, so they do. Also, Brennan, like, I'm just so intrigued to see more of what's going to happen with his character because it's like, I don't, I don't know if I... I was so excited that Brennan was going to be back, but I'm just getting a weird vibe from him that I'm like, can I trust you, Brennan? I need him to prove it to me a little bit. But I'm so happy to be back at Vazgith where, um, you know, we get to see all of the characters we love again. And um, basically they arrive back just in time for graduation. Satan Zaddy gets his assignment and basically him and Violet find out that they're only gonna be able to see each other once a week, which is a huge deal for their dragons because their dragons are mated and they're really not supposed to be apart for more than a couple of days. So very interested to see how that plays out. And they're going to have to take turns going back and forth and of course they give Zayden a terrible assignment because um, they're trying to kill him basically and Dane's dad um, I forget what his official title is commander Atos or whatever um, he basically threatened to kill Zayden and Violet and Violet's sister so um, yeah we I'm watching them they also introduced this new um, commander who's going to be coming in I forget his name but getting villain vibes off of him definitely don't trust him I think he's gonna be problematic so that's kind of where we're at um, I was really hoping for a little bit of smut before Zayden went off to his assignment but it didn't work out because Violet's still really mad at him for keeping secrets even though I do think Zayden makes a good point of like I'm gonna be a commander in the army I'm gonna have some secrets from you I'm not just gonna tell you everything that's happening so I feel like Violet needs to get over herself like I get it you don't want to be lied to and you don't want to be kept in the dark but there's just certain things like if you're if you're gonna date a commander in the army someone who's gonna be super high up there's going to be secrets so get over yourself girl wake up why whoa molly <laughs> why deprive yourself of zayden zaddy you know what i'm saying so that's my recap very interested to see where this story is leading to and let's go ahead and dive in and one last thing I'll say is they're basically waiting for the new round of first years to come now that Violet and her whole class who survived first year has been moved into second year position. And I am very intrigued. I know that there's definitely gonna be a storyline going on with Liam's sister because she's gonna come and be a first year this year and Violet had promised that, he that she would help protect Liam's sister as Liam was dying, which I can't believe he's dead. I just keep hoping and praying that there's some, I mean, it's fantasy, like anything goes, right? So like, please bring Liam back to us. I really, really wish that that would happen, but I don't think realistically it will. Molly. <laughs> okay, we're checking in. Sorry if you hear like noises, the people who clean our building are here and they're right outside my door currently. So uh, there's kind of some banging around. I am currently 20, 19% into the book. I'm on chapter 12 and just a couple things. Crazy when Violet almost dies um, and the fact that there are clearly people who have been sent into first year with the instructions to kill Violet and the other people who were there and saw the venom. So I'm definitely intrigued to see how that continues to play out. I definitely think there are going to be a lot more people dying in this book. I guess kind of there already has been. I guess the first book had a lot of death too, but very, very scared for the people who we actually care about in this book. Also, as suspected, this new guy who took over um, Atos's spot at Bazgith, I still cannot remember what his name is. It starts with a V. Anyway, um, he is pure evil. I basically just got through a chapter where Violet was flying to meet Zayden for the first time at his posting. And right before she took off, he came out and like searched through her bag to make sure she wasn't smuggling anything to Zayden. Although it turns out that they actually were smuggling things. They were just hidden on her dragon tarn. Word is also starting to get out that there's another black dragon because um, Andarna actually turned black. Uh, when she used all of her power during the battle at the end of the first book. 
Um, she's no longer gold, which is so crazy. But the main thing that I wanted to say is that I'm just so happy with how determined Zayden is to still be with Violet. I love that he's not like sinking to her level, level of like pettiness that she's giving him. Um, not that I should call her petty, like whatever. I already went into how I feel about that situation. But I'm just glad that he's making it very clear to her. Like, I'm not sleeping with other people. I'm not trying to be with other people. Like, it is just you. You are the only person I'm interested in. And very into that because I'm very into them as a couple. I was going to say that I really hope that while she's at this outpost where Zayden is stationed, that we get a little bit of smut, something a little exciting happens. And like, maybe we'll get a little tease of it. But realistically, when I'm thinking about it, I don't think things are gonna go well here. I actually think probably something really bad is going to happen. Or not really bad, but like I could definitely see an attack happening or like at the very, very least, um, Zayden and Violet um, getting into a really big fight. So not thrilled about that, but <laughs> uh, you know, there does have to be some sort of storyline happening here. So I get why I can't just go my way and be all happy. <laughs> <laughs> or hear me out, new prediction. Maybe things go my way right now. The next time that they see each other, sometime around the 50 or 60% mark of the book, things really go badly and that's what pushes her towards Dane if that happens, which I'm still like, ugh, about. But just thinking about that line that Rebecca Yarrow said of, I reach for Dane's belt buckle. It's so funny to think back to old me reading the first fourth wing book because this is all I wanted was Dane smut and Zayden smut. And then obviously Dane really went downhill right into the trash can and all I cared about was Zayden, obviously. And I still do, but I am still kind of intrigued by some Dane smut. So even though it's not who I want Violet to be with, it will still be kind of exciting to see how that goes. And I just switched to put on this little reading background here with a little thunderstorm. I love reading with reading backgrounds and I love the sound of rain, so this is perfect. It'll be even better when I have a Christmas tree right here, but we're still a little bit off from that. <laughs> Oh yes, they're finally kissing, yes. Oh my God, finally. Oh my God, is she crazy? She said, then don't stop, we can keep it nothing but sex. We did last year, not that it worked that well. Like girl, there's no way this stays just sex, no feelings. Like you keep talking about how in love with him you are. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not gonna be just sex. No, they're gonna stop. <laughs> I knew it. Uh, didn't I say that it was just gonna be a kiss this time around? Okay, like this is so cute though. He says, I refuse to use sex as a tool to get you back. He takes my hand and presses it to my chest, not when I want it to be here. <sighs> oh my gosh. <laughs> he is so cute. Oh my gosh. Like favorite book boyfriend ever. <sighs> She's so annoying. Violet, don't even start to act like Faye run to me because I can't have that, please. <laughs> it's the next morning, everyone, and oh my gosh, so much has happened since the last time I checked in with you, so I'm sorry about that, that I haven't been updating you guys more regularly, but I've just been in such a deep reading hole. It's so funny to think how much time of my life has been spent reading since this book came out less than 48 hours ago. I don't even know where to begin. So much crazy shit has happened. I guess we can start with, I finally hit the smut and it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely did not disappoint. It was some smut between Zayden and Violet, so I haven't gotten to any Dane stuff yet. In fact, I can't even like fathom that happening. I'm so confused about like in what scenario that's going to be a thing. Because it really seems like Violet and Zayden are starting to communicate better and open up to each other more. Oh my gosh, also I read this crazy chapter where um, Varish, who is that new really evil professor I don't know, he's just in charge of the school. I don't think he's actually a professor. Decides that he's going to punish Violet for Andarna not showing up to flight practice. And Tern is not having it and just freaking goes at him and makes him get on his knees and apologize to Violet on his knees in front of her. I was like, oh, this is so badass. But of course, Varish is like even more on Violet now, like hates her more than ever it's gonna be. 
it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with that relationship they also went through their like first round of interrogation training which i was really nervous about reading uh because they made it very clear that they basically beat the shit out of them to get information and teach them how to like with withstand interrogation should they be captured uh when they're in battle and oh my god that was so stressful but dane comes in Boris tries to get dane to read violet's mind violet's obviously freaking out because of all of the secrets that she's been keeping and her her shields are not that strong yet but dane refuses he says, I'm not going to do that. And I kind of loved that. I was like, okay, Dane, like I see you. I see, I see what you're trying to do here. A little redemption arc. Do I trust it? Not really, but I don't know. Maybe Dane isn't as clued in as we think that he is. Cause Violet did confront him about saying, I'll miss you, which she thought meant that he knew that she was like going somewhere where she was gonna die in the first book. But then he said like, no, I just realized that you were gonna be with Zayden and not me. And so I said, I'll miss you. He could totally be lying, but I don't know. Part of me feels like he wasn't. Violet definitely thought he was lying, but I don't know. I'm not as convinced that, that he was lying in that situation. So I just think like, I don't know if people would truly trust Dane with that information. Also so funny, I'm literally so addicted to this book that I got an audible free trial so that I can listen to the audiobook while I do other things. But I definitely prefer reading over listening to the audiobook. Um, I don't know, just like the reader doing voices kind of gives me the ick. I'm also very curious about what's really going on with Andarna. Like we really have not gotten a ton of information about that. It was also just revealed that, I can't remember who this is, but someone really powerful said that he would help them if Violet would show her signet to him. But Zayden said like, no, we're not gonna do that because I don't trust this guy. And I guess Brennan is trying to negotiate different terms with him. So we'll see what happens there. But of course, Violet is, eager to help and get involved. So I would not be surprised if she somehow takes that into her own hands. And then craziest, most important thing that literally just happened as I was reading this morning when I woke up was that Violet finally told her friends about the Venon and the Wyvern. So she told Rhiannon, she told Riddick, and she told Sawyer. And I am so happy that she finally told them. I don't know what their reaction is yet because the chapter ended with her like deciding that she was going to tell them. Oh, and last thing that I want to bring up is that we met Zayn Aiden's ex cat. Violet went to a weapons drop off exchange situation with the Griffin Riders, and Cat is a Griffin Rider, so Satan used to be with a Griffin Rider, kind of tea. But also, he's made it very clear that there is nothing there. Also, when Violet first heard about the ex, um, I think that was from Bodhi. Bodhi was fully like, um, you know, he's never acted this way, not even with Kat. So again, shows that he cares way more about Violet. And then Taryn was being so funny, being like, she hasn't had one dragon choose her and you've had two. So like, please, your ego, get it together. <laughs> Um, so theories, I definitely think Violet is going to involve herself with that king or, or whoever that is who wants to see her signet in action. So that's gonna be problematic for sure. I definitely think more is gonna come up with Kat, uh, Zayden's ex, although maybe not in this book, I don't know. This might be more of like a slow burn storyline that happens here. I don't think Dane knows about the Venon. I don't think that Dane knows that Violet and Zayden and their whole squad were being sent off to die during the war games. So I think that he might be better than we think he is. Oh, oh my God, something else crazy happened. Jack Barlow is alive again. Literally in the last book, Violet made an entire mountain fall on him, but apparently they spent like a year healing him and brought him back to life. And I'm very, very curious to see the impact that's going to have on the story. I truly have no idea what's gonna happen there. Iron Flame check-in. I have not made a ton of progress, hi Bean, since um, I last spoke to you guys this morning because obviously I worked all day. <laughs> but I listened to a chapter during, while I made lunch, and then I listened to a chapter while I was in the shower just now. And so much shit is going down. So they just snuck into the archives and they ended up finding what they were looking for. These journals from the first riders. That's going to tell them how they can um, build up these wards. However, where I just stopped, they were like seconds away from being trapped in the archives. And if you get trapped in the archives, you die. So we're going to, we're going to open this baby up and uh, look at what happens together. Oh my god, okay, so they all made it through the door. Thank god. I mean, you kind of knew they would. It's not like someone's gonna die right now. But someone could have died, but you knew Zayden wasn't gonna die. Okay, wow, this is so crazy. Oh, 
Violet is way too hopeful right now in this chapter and I just know something really bad is about to happen. Oh no. So she's got a drink and she said it has a funny yet familiar aftertaste and I'm wondering if it might be laced with whatever like dulls her signet, which by the way, I don't think we've really talked about that yet, that they've come up with a solution that dulls their connection to their dragon and their signet. And I know that that's gonna come heavily into play, the fact that they've created this and not in a good way. <laughs> oh, here we go. My head blurs my vision swimming momentarily. Taryn, but Taryn isn't there. Every connection I have is fuzzy. I knew it. I knew if she had a familiar aftertaste, it had to have been that. Oh no. Oh no, it's Varish. This is really bad. Oh God, this book, I swear. <laughs> Sends me for a loop. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, I am reporting to you live from bed because I'm literally about to go to sleep, but I have one chapter left in part one. <sighs> Uh, yeah, no, it's just too late. I can't read it right now because it's kind of long, but tomorrow morning for sure. And so much crazy shit has happened. Varish basically took Violet and has been interrogating her for five days, torturing her, breaking her bones and like literally physically torturing her for five days straight. It's so insane. But then he brings in Dane to read her mind and now Dane is attacking Varish and killing other people just to help Violet. So as predicted, Dane better than we think that he would be. Better, we, does that sound just make any sense? He's better than we think he is. <laughs> but so much shit is going down. It is absolutely insane. I am so curious to see where it's going to go from here. I swear like just the fourth wing series in general has this way of making like what you suspect will be like the main climax ending of the book come in the middle and then just more crazy stuff happens the entire time after that. So I just know it's gonna be like straight action from here on out. Good morning everyone and we are going to finish part one of Iron Flame right now and I thought this would probably be a good one for us to read and react to together. I have a feeling that it's, it's some, some shit's about to go down. I just, this book, I'm loving it so much and this is probably my only opportunity I'm gonna have to read today. Um, I might get a chapter in like before bed tonight, but um, I'm gonna be out for most of the day and then I have a work event tonight, so I gotta get this in right now. Does anyone else need to like prop their head up while they read? Like, <laughs> this is my favorite reading position. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. Yes, oh my God, Zayden, please kill Varish. Oh, this man needs to die. I hate him. He's major umbrage vibes for just like nothing, nothing redeemable about him. He is not a fun villain at all. I want him to die. Yes, oh my God. Zayden tells Dane, no, you don't get to kill Varish. Violet gets to, she wants to, and Violet goes, I do. Yes, bitch, let's go. <gasps> oh, wow. Yeah, she goes, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? Go back to class? Girl, no, I don't think you're going back to this school. I think your schooling is likely done um considering that you just killed the vice commandant or whatever the fuck varish is and also they think that you're a part of the rebellion which you are or revolution you know i need to stop calling it a rebellion oh my god okay i'm just absolutely dying where the hell is this book going to go where is this series gonna go no more school there's not gonna be any more school oh i'm so happy varish is dead and also just like good for violet that she withstood all of that torture for days and days and never said a thing. Oh, finally, they say I love you to each other. Violet's mom, Violet's mom, Violet's mom. Oh my God, is she gonna be on the good side? I'm going to die. Wow, okay. I'm very conflicted about how I feel about that conversation with her mom. Um, she clearly is not down to fight the venom. Um, like she's not really on the side of full good, but she's not full bad either. She just revealed that like Satan, uh, that she asked Satan to protect Violet. And also Dane has confirmed that like, he wants to be on Violet's side, on the side of uh, the revolution. So that's pretty crazy. Dane, don't fool me now, come on. <laughs> Wow, oh my God. Okay, they're gonna call a formation and they're gonna tell everyone about the venom and let them choose. <gasps> this is so crazy. Oh my God. Oh my God, part two. <laughs> I can't 
believe it. They are literally all at the rebellion right now. Revolution, sorry. I am so excited though to see what's going to happen next. This is gonna be such an exciting part two. Like 200-ish riders flew with them. Uh, Jasenia flew with them from the Scribes Quadrant. Halfway through this book and it is just blowing my mind. We need to talk because some big stuff has happened since the last time I checked in with you guys. The first is that Violet had her first training session with Felix. And he realized that Carr, the old teacher at Basgeath, has not actually been teaching her how to properly use her power. And I think that's so interesting. It's genuinely not something that I really thought about, but it does make so much sense. And so he's going to teach her how to control her power, which I'm very excited for. I think it's gonna make her like crazy powerful. But in the meantime, they have flown off to see the Tyrish King, this count, I guess, technically, who wanted to see her wield her lightning power in order to give them the luminaries. So now they are kind of in negotiations about whether they're gonna get the luminary or not. And he basically agreed to give it to them if they took back some of their um, griffin riders and helped train them the way that they're training their dragon riders, which includes Satan's ex cat. We found out her power is that she can heighten, heighten people's emotions that they're feeling to make them act more irrationally, assuming, assume, assumingly, ass assumedly. What? Assuming that's why she would use it, I guess. It's kind of what I'm trying to get at. And you can just see where this is going now. I am so excited. I think it's gonna be really interesting seeing the Griffin Riders start to interact with the Dragon Riders. Oh, also, while they were visiting the King, Violet had to fight off a Venon, which was so crazy. Literally almost killed Mira and Brennan in the process, but she did it. And I am so excited to see what else is gonna happen here. You guys. I am in a state of shock right now. I'm literally, I'm going to cry. Riddick just got injured by arrows that were set in a trap while like the riders and flyers are walking along this steep cliff. Oh my God. Okay, so he's not dead yet, but he's been stabbed in the abdomen and blood is coming out of his mouth. So it's really not a good sign. I am so stressed for what's about to happen. I cannot have Riddick die. Oh no. Oh god, no. I'm so scared to keep reading. I'm so scared to keep reading. Okay. Oh god. Okay. Uh, oh no. Oh god. I really hope that Riddick isn't dead. No. Oh god. Luella died. It's so sad. Her griffin. Okay. Riddick is still alive, but like this cannot be good, right? Oh, it's so sad. So it's similar to riders and dragons. When a flyer dies, their griffin dies. And so this griffin is dying right now. The griffin is just like literally crying and grieving. That is so sad. <laughs> okay, good. Brennan is there. So hopefully he's just going to save Riddick. <gasps> I was really scared there because I could totally see her killing off someone like Riddick. <gasps> oh my God. I really, I mean, I guess it's not fully confirmed yet, but I really hope he's all right. Shit, there's freaking Wyvern there, and Riddick is injured. Oh god. Oh god. This is really bad. I'm stressed. <sighs> no, Riddick is really not doing well. Oh, that is tea. Dane goes, would Royerson let you rush off into a battle against God's knows how many Wyvern, or worse, the Venom who created them when you're wounded? Yes, I step out onto the midpoint of Terran's tail. That's why I love him. Mm, T, Jane, that's why you lost her, overprotective. This is so dumb. You know how um, Rebecca Yarrow said like, the line that will make everyone freak out the most is, I reach for Dane's belt buckle or whatever. I just got to that line. This is so stupid. It's just her asking Taryn, are there, are there other dragons out here? I reach for the buckle of Dane's belt and then carefully pull the leather aside to slip my arm free because Dane used his belt to like make her a sling because her arm popped out of the socket. Like, ugh, you kidding me? She really played with us. I knew, I freaking knew after like starting the book, I was like, there is no way that happens. So, <sighs> so rude though. We want Dane Smut, come on. <laughs> okay, good, Riddick is alive. Oh my gosh, this is so stressful. <laughs> you guys, we need a reading check-in. It has been 
so long i feel like since i've checked in with you guys but i've literally just not had time to sit down and actually read so it's just been like little bits here and there and oh my gosh so much has happened i cannot wait to talk to you guys about this so i feel like the biggest thing that we need to discuss is that everyone's theory was correct and zane is an intrinsic which means he can read people's minds but not exactly because he can actually read people's intentions which is so dope Basically, Navari comes to them and says, we're going to be overrun by the Wyvern, by the Venon, by the Dark Wielders um, at Solstice, at this specific location, and they actually say that they're not going to come and help, which is so crazy. Of course, Violet is like, we have to help them, otherwise we're no better than them. But I also understand the other side of like, you guys would, were lying to us for 600 years, literally. And, um, you know, why should we help you now? But then they figure out that they're actually not going to attack that other location where they're actually going to attack is Basgeath, which is where their main ward is. So then like Violet and Zayden, everyone flies off to go and fight for Basgeath. Also, they managed to get their wards up, but there's something faulty about them and they don't know why or what yet. So that's unfortunate. But the craziest, craziest thing, freaking Jack Barlow turns out to be Venon. I literally still don't understand the logistics of that, but um, apparently he is Venon and he single-handedly brings down their entire ward. And now where I'm at in the book, a massive battle is happening in Basgeath and I'm absolutely dying. But I'm mostly dying because I have an hour left in this book and I do not have time to read it right now, nor will I probably have time to read it today. Oh my God, what? How can I have an hour left and not have time? But I just have so much to do today and I'm out all night at an event that I'm going to, so I like I just can't. So I currently have time to read one more chapter because it's 15 minutes, I have 15 more minutes. Um, and essentially what just happened is Violet is stuck in her saddle on Terran, like she can't get her belt off. And so Brienne just jumped from her dragon onto Terran to fight the Dark Wielder or Venon. I'm so confused about the Dark Wielders and Venon are the same thing. Anyway, there is a Venon or whatever on her dragon about to kill her and Brienne just jumped onto her dragon to try to help her. <sighs> I'm dying. I feel fairly confident that nothing's going to happen to Re. Like, I don't think that they're going to kill her off, but I could definitely see them killing Riddick or Sawyer. But I really hope not. Like, they have made a pact to each other. The four of them don't die. And I just, I really don't want any of them to die. <laughs> okay. Re is fine, as predicted. I thought that she probably would be. Whew, thank goodness. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. You see? Riddick. Oh, no. No. Oh my god, Sawyer's bottom of his leg got bitten off by a wyvern. Oh my god, Violet. Okay, Sawyer's alive. But like, not good that he lost a leg, right? Like, that can't be good for a dragon rider. No. No. Oh, freaking Andarna always has to involve herself. She's gonna get herself killed and I cannot live through Andarna dying. I cannot. Oh my god, how am I supposed to put this book down? But I have to. The time has come and I have to do it. Oh my god. It is the next day and I finally, you guys, have time to sit down and finish Iron Flame. The way that it has been killing me that I have not had a second of time to read the last 45 minutes of this book. Like, I'm so close. And I have not had a moment to do it. It has been torturous being so close and not being able to just knock it out. But I feel like the gods were actually in my favor. What's the god of luck from this book? I can't remember, but I feel like they were looking out for me and actually put this all into place because we are having a rainy day in LA today. And so it's just the perfect rainy chill vibes to finish Iron Flame with. And I'm just, I'm so excited, you guys. I cannot even tell you. Basically right where I left off, um, the Venon were telling Violet that they were meant to keep her alive. And basically they were instructed to like capture her rather than kill her, um, which she was acting like all shocked about. And I felt like that had kind of sort of been obvious based on things that other Venon had said to her in the past, but I guess she hadn't caught on because no one has said it in th that many words, been like, we are not here to kill you, we're here to capture you. But someone actually told me this theory and my mind has been spinning ever since. What if Violet's dad is actually one of like the main sages? Like he's not actually dead. He's like a sage and a part of these dark wielders. And that's why they're trying to capture Violet because they're gonna actually bring her and it's gonna be her dad. That would be fucking crazy, you guys. And I could totally see that being true. And then also with that, I guess, 
like you could probably put together that maybe Liam is actually a Venon now, but I actually really hope not. As much as I still want Liam to be alive, to have him be a Venon would be really, really sad. Unless there's like a good side to the dark wielders, which doesn't, it does not seem realistic, but who knows, it's fantasy, anything can happen. So let's get into this. Ooh, don't listen to me, okay? If you can help it. What? Well, I'm trying to talk to my vlog. <laughs> this is a spoiler vlog, so I'm allowed to like share my theories as I go. Oh my God. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. We'll put your AirPods in though. That's exactly what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> so, and Darna just came in to um, help her when the Venn were attacking her. Um, but something kind of interesting happened where she now she now has black scales, but it keeps reflecting like things around her. And that's kind of been like, mentioned throughout the book she's on green grass it like kind of has a green sheen to it etc um but what just happened is she was actually hidden kind of like in the mountain and looked like the stone there but now um they're trying to figure out the situation with the ward stone originally they thought they needed like the six different dragon houses which are what she just said black blue green orange brown and red however what if there's a seventh which is andarna and it's like this shape-shifting type of dragon what if there is one more dragon den that we don't know about yet and that can be the seventh and that is what's going to actually bring the ward stones up i'm telling you i'm i've feel very confident that that is going to happen. That's cute, Jasenia is like running to Sawyer because obviously she has found out that he got injured. I'm very into that couple. I am telling you that theory is right. Like I think Violet just figured it out and she just hasn't said it yet. I think my prediction's about to happen. Finally, I actually figured something out. <laughs> oh my God, I am dying at this right now. Literally, and Darna said, I waited 650 years to hatch until she heard the elders talking of a weak, it's fine, of a weakling daughter of their general, a girl forecasted to become the head of the scribes, and I knew you would be mine. How, like, how did she know? How did she know? I'm dying. They just said it. Confirmed. I was right. Ha! Ha! Finally, finally, I am terrible at guessing these things in these books and I got this one right. <laughs> oh my God. So cute though. Um, and Darna said that like the reason that she presents as black is because she admires Taryn so much. Taryn is legit like my favorite character in these books, I think. Especially like in the second book, he has just been oh, just so amazing. The way that he takes care of Violet and boosts her self-esteem and all of those things just like, I love it. I'm obsessed. What? Where is this even coming from? Oh. Literally, just a TikTok live started playing on my phone while it was completely locked. TikTok is so sketchy. Oh, 100%. It's so sketchy. What? That is really weird. We're never off. Seriously. Oh my god, though. The sentence I just read. They literally just dragged Sloan, Liam's sister, <laughs> into this chamber to try to imbue this word stone with all of her power. And literally they're saying, if I have to choose between her life and yours, I choose yours. Meaning they're gonna let Sloan die. Violet just opened her pathway to Zayden and said Zayden's dying. What is happening right now? What is happening? Wait, hold on. Is it not Sloane who's gonna die? It's her mom? And Sloane is just, yeah, oh my god, wait, I'm just putting this together that I misunderstood what I was reading. Sloane's not going to die. Sloane is going to use her siphon and siphon out all of Violet's mom's power and her dragon's power and put it into the ward stone. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this is so sad. <laughs> oh my god, she did it. She burned out, but, but the ward stone is, is humming. It's up, it's imbued. Oh my god. It literally just made me like emotional when she said I'd see him soon, talking about going to see their dad oh oh my gosh they did it that's it wow wow oh my gosh
This is so stressful, this book. Oh. My. God. No. <laughs> what? Satan turned venom. No. This can't be. No. 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 I just, I don't want that. I don't want whatever this storyline is going to turn into. We have one chapter left. It's from Zayden's POV. Maybe we'll get some more answers, but... <sighs> oh my god. Oh, this book. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm so upset about this ending. No. Ugh. I don't know. I don't know if I'm happy with this. <laughs> Okay, let's discuss this ending because I literally do not know what to think here, you guys. <laughs> I don't think I'm happy with this ending. I just didn't, I did not want Zayden to become Venon. I think that that's obvious. Oh, God. And literally, like, you know how they have the little passage at the top of each chapter? Like, the top, uh, the passage at the top of his chapter was, like, how there is no cure. There's only control. So he's gonna have to learn how to like control his venom power to still be good. But like, no, I just don't want this. I'm just so glad that pretty much all of their friends survived. Not pretty much, like they did. Thank goodness. Um, obviously was sad when her mom died, but also like, it's not that deep. If anything, it just like made me emotional, as I said, when she said like, I'm gonna see him soon. It was talking about their dad, their dad, um, that, definitely hit, you know, like, that's just a very sweet and sad sentiment. I mean, overall, fucking loved the book. Loved it so much. I'm so excited for the next one, although I did read that Rebecca Yaros has not even started the third book yet, so we got a long time to go here probably. But, oh, that ending, it just kind of like, it's, I just did not want that to happen and didn't need to. Like, I, I do feel like it kind of just didn't need to happen. I don't know. <laughs> So please let me know in the comments what you think. Leave all your theories down there. Like, I need to know what all the girlies think about the ending of this book because my mind is just, like, going in circles right now. I cannot deal. I'm losing it. I'm losing it, you guys. Oh, my God. I just didn't want this. <laughs> The distress I feel. Oh my gosh. It's just such like a it's such a different feeling from the ending of the first book where you find out that Brennan is alive and you're like so pumped and excited and happy about this revelation. The ending of this book is like, well, that's a shit revelation and I don't want it. <laughs> that's how I feel. And I hope that they kill Jack Barlow. Like it's annoying me that he's still alive. At the end of the book, Zayden goes down there to be like, what's the cure? Like, tell me. He's like, there is no cure. Welcome to the family. I guess we're brothers now. Like, Jack Barlow, you are such a problem. I thought we got rid of you in the first book. Like, oh my God, it's so annoying. Also, the revelation about Andarna, that whole chapter was so crazy. And I guess she is literally like the only dragon of her kind who is in existence right now. So crazy. I just, I am so beyond beyond. Wow. I do, I'm going to go process this, <laughs> but thank you guys for watching this reading vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in my next vlog where we're going to be putting up the Christmas tree. I'm so excited. I'll see you guys then. Wow.